Hey guys, Tootsie here. A lot of people have started streaming recently. However, for some Android users, their phones don't support video output, which prevents them from using a capture card. Although there are some workarounds, there's still a problem with recording the audio. So in this video, I'll be showing you a way to record or stream your Android phone's video and audio on OBS without using a capture card. To record your Android phone's screen, we're going to use a method called screen mirroring. For this, we're going to use an app called SERCPY or screen copy. Before we use screen copy, we need to enable USB debugging on our phone. To do that, go to your phone's settings, about phone, software information, and tap on build number until you enable developer options. Now, go back to your phone's settings and go to developer options. Look for USB debugging and make sure it's enabled. Connect your phone to your PC. Take note that some phones want to be connected on USB 3 for data transfer. Now, you need to download and set up screen copy. Search for screen copy and look for the GitHub page. I've placed the link on the description below. Scroll down until you get the Windows download link. Unzip the file to a folder in any location you want. I just chose desktop for this video. Open the folder and copy the location. Now, we're going to try and run screen copy. Open the run command by pressing Windows key plus R and type CMD. Press enter or click OK. This will open CMD or command prompt. In CMD, type CD space then paste the location of your folder by pressing Ctrl plus V. Press Enter. We are now in the screen copy folder. In CMD, type ADB space devices. You'll notice that your device will be labeled as unauthorized. Check your Android phone. There must be a message asking if you want to allow USB debugging. Check always from this computer if you want. Tap OK. Type ADB space devices again in CMT to check your device. Once it says connected, we can start screen copy. In CMD, type SCRCPY space dash S space the serial number that appeared. You can add other commands such as dash M to set the size of the mirrored screen. I'll type dash M space 2340 since my phone's resolution is 1080 by 2340. The aspect ratio will be retained. Another command is the dash B command which sets the bitrate of your mirrored screen. The default bitrate is set to 8 so I'll stick to that for now. However, set this to at least 20 for 1080p recording for best results. After that, press enter. The mirrored screen can now be recorded or streamed. By the way, tap controls and keyboard work on screen copy. For other commands, you can check out the screen copy GitHub page. If you don't want to capture your phone's video through USB, you can do so through Wi-Fi. We can still use screen copy for that. Here are the steps. First, connect your computer and your phone on the same Wi-Fi. Connect your Android phone to your computer through USB. Run CMD and go to the screen copy location as we did before. Type ADB space TCPIP space 5555 and press enter. Disconnect your phone from your computer. Now, we need to get your device IP address. You can do this by going to settings, about phone, and status. In CMD, type ADB space connect space your phone's IP address, colon 5555, and press enter. Now we can run screen copy. In CMD, type SCRCPY space dash S space your device IP address, colon 5555. Like on the USB method, you can add commands here. Since this is a wireless connection, you may want to experiment on what bitrate and size would be best for you. But for this test, I'll stick with our previous settings. The good thing about wireless method is that you'll be able to charge your phone using your charging brick while recording or streaming. 
though you'll also be charging while using the USB method, it might not be as fast. The downside of using this Wi-Fi method is that you may get some stuttering. Now, the mirrored screen is ready to be streamed or recorded, but how about the audio? For the audio, you're going to have to get a few items. Don't worry, these won't cost much and they're easy to get. Here are the items needed. A 3.5mm TRRS splitter. This is used to split the audio and microphone signals. A 3.5mm TRS splitter. This is used to duplicate the audio signal. And lastly, a 3.5mm TRS male-to-male -male cable. If you need to use a mic on your phone, you need a headset with separate audio and mic plugs. If it only has a single 3.5mm plug, you're going to need a 3.5mm TRRS female to 2 TRS male plug to separate the audio and microphone signals. I'm going to post links to these products on the description below so that you have a reference. On this video, I'm going to use a headset with separate audio and mic plugs. First, connect the TRRS splitter to your phone. Connect the TRS splitter to the audio plug on the TRRS splitter. Connect your headset's mic to the corresponding plug on your TRRS splitter. Connect your headset's audio plug to one of the ports on the TRS splitter. Connect the male to male cable on the remaining port on the TRS splitter and the other end to your computer's line in. This is the blue port on the back of your computer. If you don't need to use a mic on your phone, you just need to connect the male to male cable directly to your phone's 3.5mm port and the other end to your computer's line in. If you are using a laptop, you can connect the male to male cable to the mic in but you won't be able to use a 3.5mm mic on your stream or recording. Take note that the mic connected to your phone will not be recorded on OBS, but it will be heard in the game's voice chat. To have your voice heard in the stream or recording, you will have to get another mic for your computer. For laptops, you can get a USB sound card for additional audio inputs or you can use a USB microphone instead. Now, we can set everything up on OBS. Open OBS and add screen copy as a game capture source. Add whatever label you want and click OK. Set the mode to specific window and choose screen copy. Click OK. You'll be able to see the screen copy window on the OBS canvas. You can make some adjustments on the size so that the game fits perfectly on the canvas. To be able to capture and hear the audio through your computer, go to settings and go to audio. Look for mic slash auxiliary audio 2 and select line in. Click apply and then OK. At the audio mixer of OBS, look for mic slash aux 2. Click on the gear icon and click advanced audio properties. Change the audio monitoring to monitor only. You can select monitor and output, but you will have to mute the desktop audio to prevent echoing. Click close. Now, you'll be able to hear your phone's audio. You will also be able to record it. I know that some of you might ask for OBS settings. I'm not an expert on this, but I can give you some tips on where you can start. Go to the OBS settings, then let's go to the video first. You can set the base resolution to the resolution that you're running at. You can leave the output resolution to the same as your base resolution. But if you want to record or stream at a lower resolution, you can change the output resolution to a lower one. I usually just leave the downscale filter to bicubic. You can also select what FPS you want. But it's usually 60 or 30. If you want to stream at a lower end system, you can consider streaming 720p at 30 or 60 fps. Now, on the output settings, make sure you set the output mode to advanced so that we can tweak more settings. First, at the streaming tab, you can experiment which encoder works best for you. For example, try x264 first. For streaming, set the rate control to constant bitrate or CBR, and set the bitrate to whatever your streaming platform suggests. I'll put links on the description below to those suggested bitrates. 
For the CPU usage, try setting it to very fast first and work your way up if you think your system can still handle it. Just leave the other settings at default. After finding the sweet spot for X264, you can try the GPU encoders to see if those will be better. Some say that NVIDIA GPU encoders are actually better at streaming. But right here, I'm using an AMD graphics card. Set the quality preset on speed first, then try balance and quality afterwards. For NVIDIA graphics cards, set the preset to max performance first. For the bitrate, follow the value suggested by your streaming platform. Leave other settings at default. If you think you have a low-end CPU, using your GPU encoder might be better, especially if it's NVIDIA. Now let's go to the recording tab. I usually like to set the recording format to MP4. Here, try to experiment on which encoder works best for you too for recording. For X264, select CRF for the rate control instead of CBR, then set the CRF to around 16 to 22. Here I've set it to 20. Try to experiment with the CPU usage to like what I said at the streaming tab and set it first at very fast. Leave other settings at default. For graphics cards, you'll basically just do the same thing from the streaming tab but you can set the bit rate a lot higher. You can try 10,000 first and try adding a few thousands after. Don't go above 25,000 if you have a low-end PC. Take note that a higher bit rate will give you a larger file size. I think that X264 using CRF rate control is the best one for recording. But depending on your computer, you'll be the one to know which one is better. For the stream settings, select whichever service or platform you're using. If it isn't there, just select custom. The server and stream key will be visible to you on your streaming platform when starting a stream. I think you'll be able to set up your OBS with those tips. Here's a sample recording using OBS. This game was recorded at 1080p 30fps using X264 as the encoder and CRF as rig control set at 20. The CPU usage is set at very fast. The screen copy bitrate was set to 20. Thanks for watching, please like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more content. I'm going to stop talking and let you guys watch the sample recording.